that we needed more time for uh, um, April town meeting. But I think we might want to start looking at limited building permits. Uh, I've seen in the uh, Eagle Tribune that a lot of the surrounding communities have put those into place. And certainly, uh, limited building permits would slow down some of the problems, such as what Mr. D. Giovanni uh, expressed tonight, because of the limited space. I know that we, we had a uh, presentation at our last meeting, which, before he left, uh, his numbers were cut in half, you know? So, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, certainly, you know, with, uh, with the problems of a developing uh, community such as North Reading, uh, you know, sprawl, which was one of the things that they're discussing at this stream flow, so I, I thought that would be interesting for all of us. Um, you know, I think we should take a harder look at that. Um, the other thing is the uh, Mass Municipal Association meeting is coming up, and, you know, it's for selectmen, it's for, quite frankly, everybody in government, uh, pretty much. and. Uh, if anybody wants to go, how do we work that? Because I do have free tickets. <laughs> After that, they all get, they'll get applications and their beacons anyway. Okay. Yeah, we've all had it. Okay. If anybody's, <laughs> if anybody's interested, you know. Uh, Is that this month? It's uh, 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 12 to 13. 12 to 13. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Mr. Smith. Yeah, I guess. Um, <coughs> A couple of weeks ago, the uh, school committee, um, the school committee appointed um, some uh, what they call them non official non ex officio ex officio members to the school building committee, and I, I actually wondered how that all come about because in researching back to the town meeting in, in um, 1995. It showed where the town of North Reading formulated a school building committee of, of seven people. And um, each person that was appointed to the school building committee was appointed in joint appointment with the Board of Selectmen and the, and the school committee. And um, that was the way the article passed. And I was wondering why the Board of Selectmen wasn't involved in that process of, of appointing anybody. And in, if, in fact, how it became possible to even appoint ex officio members. Uh, who, who, how did they obtain the jurisdiction to do that? Well, the state statute, they had the jurisdiction to call for it, bring it to town meeting, and then the appointment process of the state statute requires a joint appointment by the uh, selectmen and school committee. Right. Uh, but as far as anything above and beyond that, it's a matter of uh, school committee policy as to how it's handled. And uh, again, as far as the charge committee, that's all falls under the uh, responsibility of the school committee. Um, but well, the total I, I, membership I, and the expansion of it, and expansion of the membership, voting membership, again, requires a joint vote. Um, they want to put ad hoc people on there. We can't prevent them from doing it. But and I guess fact, nothing would prevent us from doing the same thing. Right. Nothing would prevent us from doing the same thing. thing. Although, but, although, although the, the school committee is, is uh, entrusted with the responsibility of determining no, uh, you know, and, and as Mr. Smith said, and we've got things on our packet here, it, it does not give, unless the school committee has something that says it, but the state, the state doesn't, and neither does town meeting's motion. So, um, you know, it's, it's not, you know, school committees from any research that I've done are pretty much autonomous, school building committees, pretty much autonomous from school committees. Uh, they do have the right to have a, a member, uh, or um, be a designee as a member. It says nothing about ex officios. As a matter of fact, what, what I had asked for a couple of weeks ago and got readily from Dr. Troughton was that the school committee's meetings, the school committee has done all of this. Um, not, you know, talking to us, I don't remember. And certainly that isn't what town meeting said as the, uh, as the article. So, you know, I'd like to get some clarification also. Um, because, it, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a joint um, joint appointment, and the committee is established by town meeting, not by either committee, by town meeting. Yeah, but so, again, as far as any vacancy or any expansion of that committee, it must be done by a joint vote of the uh, school committee and the board of selectmen. 
Um, well, I guess that's what I'm driving at. And, and that's and, why I'm wondering again, why that wasn't an, done. I mean, ex officio non-voting members is not an expansion. They can't vote. Uh, again, they have it addressed as a matter of policy. And again, we all received that. Uh, I guess it was at your request. Yes. Uh, they put forth, which is fine. It was very informative. But the school committee, over a number of years, because of the projects that have been undertaken over the last 30 years or more, 40 years, you know, has had to address this on a more regular basis than the Board of Selectmen will, because generally it comes under their purview. Well, um, with the exception of the, the appointments of permanent members, voting members of the school building committee. So as a matter of policy, they've addressed it over a number of years. And this is how they've handled it. Um, and I know on the Finance Committee we did it to, uh, <laughs> to have people who that's were up to, the to speed. But that's up to the right, moderator. Exactly. I mean, he's the appointing of that. Exactly. It's up to the moderator, but the, 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 the charter or the bylaws or anything else calls for associate members of the finance. Right. That's just the moderator. Right. And the moderator is the person in charge of that board. Similarly, town meeting is in charge of the school building committee boards. Okay? It's town meeting that forms that. Okay? And your, your point is interesting that we could... Uh, we could have our own ex officio member, which may take I care of all the problems. Maybe we could. I don't know. I, I don't know what precludes us uh, from doing it, or, or may or may not preclude us. Right. I, I don't know. I have to get some sort of clarification. Um, again, uh, one thing I do know for sure, that if there is an expansion of voting members, or if there is a replacement of existing members that has to take place. Well, the reason I brought it up is I was uncomfortable because uh, after the meeting we had with Dr. Troughton on that Friday afternoon, which you attended, the school committee at the very, that was on a Friday, the very next Monday they took a vote and they voted five to nothing to support, to support nothing but a new school. So now we have a school building committee under the jurisdiction of the school committee. That vote was prior to that meeting. No, 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 it was after the meeting. They reaffirmed. Other they reaffirmed their position. So now we have, we, we have a program going forward for renovations to a bachelor school that the school committee has indicated they're not going to support anyway from, from the outset. And um, that's an uncomfortable position, I think, to put the town in when we're looking at something that may be less costly, number one. Um, I th I think save tax dollars, number two, and the school committee voting to reaffirm the position that they took. Any discussions I've meeting. had or the meeting that I went to where they took that initial vote, um, you know, they really, yeah, you were at the meeting when I, I took the I know that, and that was prior to oh. our other meeting. That was prior to that other meeting. Monday, right. but, that was a Monday. But when they reaffirmed the, they reaffirmed the vote, you know, I can understand the, the thought process of what they did. Based on the information they currently have provided, you know, this is the game plan, and they're sticking to it. That doesn't mean that they're not going to be receptive to, a, to another acceptable plan that would uh, house the students elsewise, uh, otherwise in the uh, bachelor of the school building, but they haven't got that information yet. So. Well, I mean, to, to re reaffirm the vote and take a, a solid position like that, it, a, a, a vote to look at alternative positions, I think would have been a, a they, That's better. what they did say. Well, They did say that at the meeting I was at. That's what they said. They would look at it. But the current position was stay the course with the Swan Pond School. <laughs> but they said emphatically and very straightforwardly that they would look at any other alternative that was presented that would meet the educational specification and the housing needs and the, uh, of the kids. And I guess the only other uncomfortable position I had was when they went for the $20,000 transfer that the chairman of the school committee walked out of the meeting at the finance committee meeting at, when the vote was being taken. Uh, again, I don't know. And um, the, those type of things, uh, that. those type of things just don't, don't, don't set good when you try to, I think at this particular juncture, for, for I think at this particular juncture, I think uh, from all indications and everything that I've seen and from where I'm sitting right now, I see our town boards and committees uh, working very well together in trying to bring this thing to some sort of a conclusion, this issue is to a conclusion that we can bring forth to the voters in the not too distant future so that we can get the issue resolved and move on. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I see a lot of positive things and I, and I, uh, you know, a little bit of sniping that's going on here I guess is inevitable but I would hope that it would cease. And let's just move forward with the projects and that's see what the proposal exactly comes forward. Exactly what we're hoping for, Mr. Chairman. The chairman. And that's good. So I, what I would hope it's going forward is that we just stop this kind of discussion and move on, because yeah. I think we're heading in the right direction. And I think it, whatever the numbers are going to show, they're going to show. And once we get a, get all that information in, we'll be able to make a well-informed decision as to what uh, what course we're going to take moving forward. Because everybody's on the same side of the table when it comes to recognizing that we have some very serious space problems that need to be addressed. 
that's good. I'd like to build on that stuff. No, I think we've got some very positive stuff, and, and I think, like what we said before, the changes look very favorable. That's great. Uh, and, and again, all the correspondence that we've seen in the School Building Assistance Bureau, they're actually recognizing the fact that, uh, accepting the fact that the changes are coming about, and they may have a positive impact on a, a whatever request we come forward. I think that's good. Mr. Rowe. I, I have two questions. I would like to find out on this joint appointments as to where we actually stand and what's going on. I, I'm very confused about all these articles now. My understanding is all the appointments to that ad hoc committee are supposed to be a joint appointment, the way I read the laws. And so I don't know. The ex officio? The, the laws don't address the ex officio. That's policy. That's, that's the school committee policy. Uh, the Mass General Laws do not address ex officio members of, uh, as far as non-voting members, that's to my knowledge, rather than, other than maybe the superintendent of schools or something like that. But other than that, expansion of the... Well, I, I think the point function. is that my, my concern here is that we're, we're talking about, obviously, the school committee feels that we do have a space problem with the schools. And for the benefit of the students, okay, I feel that, that we should be working forward to doing whatever we can get the townspeople to agree to. Whether that, in fact, is a new school or renovations, I don't know. Obviously, at this point, the new school certainly has not met with very favorable uh, preview from the townspeople. Uh, and I was a little disappointed when they took that vote, reaffirmed the fact that the only thing that they were going forward with was the new school. Well, but they also, they also took the position of requesting the money $20,000 for the phase one and phase two of this alternative proposal, which I thought was a very positive step, and I, they wouldn't be doing it blindly. To well, the money. I, I, I know, but I, I just, I just feel, Steve, that, you know, it, it's, we're talking about doing a positive type thing here, and I don't feel that we're getting really good positive vibes back from them, and I think it's too bad, uh, because I really feel that this project can go forward, and I feel it's probably at this point it's the only one that is going to go forward. It, it, you know, the townspeople have probably, uh, as even tonight, they've had it up to here with listening about what, what's happening, what's going on. And I, I would I hope think that you would think that the action of the school committee to support the $20,000 transfer was uh, I would like to thing. see the school committee support anything that's, that actually complies with their and needs I, I for heard, the children, I have, period. I have Whether it's a new school or no matter what it is. I have heard personally the majority of the school committee state just that. Well, I'd like to see them state it officially rather than state officially the only thing that we're going to support right now is the Swan Pond School. Well, yeah. so, uh, I think there's a lot of good positive things happening and, uh, and I think that we should continue I, to support I, those I, efforts. I have to agree with Mr. O'Leary. I think based on what the state uh, has given us and the wide berth that they're also giving us, obviously they're more flexible. You can put in your requests any time of the year at this point in time. They're, they're looking to uh, reimburse the efforts uh, so we're not using uh, open space, things like that. I think for, for what we're trying to achieve to solve the problem, uh, things are falling in place very well for us. And I think, you know, uh, the, the obviously there are you know, two sides of the story. But, you know, the, the school committee and uh, is moving, you know, obviously in the right direction. And we, we want to see that. All of us want to see that. You know, we want to see a plan brought forward that the town will back. That's what has to be done. Whether, this, whether we love it or hate it or the school committee loves it or hates it, it's the people who are going to make the decision. The people who go out to vote that day rule the day, as I said to you before the last election. And, and so we along with the school committee, want to bring forward a plan that will go forward. Mr. Smith, yep. anything else oh, you want to discuss? It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> geez. Let you. I guess sometimes when we get private mail that, that comes comes here, it's sometimes open. And um, I often wonder why, why that was. No, generally, I don't know. when you have mail that's addressed to you, um, it goes generally to you. It says maybe to Chairman Stephen O'Leary, and it's from the NAPC or something that looks official. But generally, when you get mail that has, when there are discusses, you get mail that says to. Because the last two that I've got have, have actually been open. Um, and, uh, you want to make sure you know what you're getting. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, uh, I, I remember when, when Mr. Bailey was here, the same 
thing had happened. No, we do not open individual cases. Thank you. Thank you.